We're back, and thanks for tuning in to Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Saras, and today on Think Tech, we're continuing our series. Uh, our series, of course, is NBT, or Next Big Thing, where we look for small businesses, big businesses, whoever, who's doing something important or something life-changing for the rest of us. And we're giving them that special Think Tech bump. We want to bring them on this show and uh, show off what they're doing and get some exposure for them and hopefully launch them into the stratosphere for the next big thing. So yes. uh, with us today is Brad. And Brad, uh, you're with Hawaii Shoots, but this isn't just your your only business. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe your story about how you got started and and uh, where your, what your vision is for Hawaii Shoots. Sure. Um, I've uh, actually started playing around with my mom's you know, home camcorder or VHAC camcorder a long, long time ago. I remember those. You had to like, yeah. push the push the tape in, and <laughs> yep, that was it. And you know, we used to make skate skateboarding videos and surf videos when I was in high school. Two VCRs sitting there, just kind of rewinding and play, record, pause, and just editing manually, tape to tape. Oh my gosh! That's, that's kind of how how it all started for me. Um, went out to college and. Uh, studied design and animation and worked for some pretty cool a uh, pretty cool company out in LA we made TV commercials and music videos for REM and commercial commercials for Hewlett Packard and Apple and some of these big fun companies are you in one of those commercials or are you against the white background jumping uh, no I'm not in any of those but we have shot some of those oh yeah yeah those are like iconic yeah, yeah. Um, you remember the, you know those HP spots where there was like hands animating things? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, so that was us. We, we created that campaign. Um, so a lot of fun TV spots came out of that campaign. And so you left LA mm -hmm. to come back here? Yeah. Why? This is, this is where my family was at. And um, I'm from LA, so you're talking to an LA guy you know? who just said, I'm going to sell everything and leave. Yep. We're going to start a family in Hawaii. And how bad could it be? We've never been. Hmm. And eight years later, here we are. Still here, right? Still here, yeah. Yeah. So my family was here, and my thought was, you know, I have I have the rest of my life to work. Um, we have a limited time with our family. And so I wanted to spend time with Grandpa while he could still go fishing and, you know, do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Spend time with Dad, or I could still play golf with him. So really just personal reasons that I wanted to come back home and just experience life with family. Um, and while I was doing that, uh, I was working full time and trying to build a production company on the side, and, and that's kind of how I started to build my production company, Brad Studio. Um, Brad, it's it's been uh, my nickname since college. People have been calling me Brad. Brad, yeah, Brad. That's kind of so cool. So I right. took it and I ran with it. It's better than stinkier. It's yeah. way better noticing. than stinkier. Um, so yeah, that's that's how the name came about. Uh, since then, just been doing TV commercial work and marketing work, and for clients like uh, Hawaiian Airlines and Pro Ridge, um, Outrigger Hotels, and some of these fun companies, and some smaller businesses as well. And just really love telling stories for for a lot of these clients, um, and just really sharing experiences, documenting you know lives and things like that. That's that's what I love to do, and. Um, Hawaii Shoots is kind of an expansion of that. Um, I had a lot of great experiences in LA working with big production equipment and companies. You know, we shot everything on film and all of that, but bringing it back here, I really just wanted to share some of those experiences with the community here. And so it started off as just a blog that I started in like 2011, just documenting what I was doing in production, just trying to share that with the world, share that with Hawaii. And um, it evolved into something where there was a community kind of vibing with that. And so I started to look for co-working spaces or, or different locations that we could have meetups where we could discuss what's happening here in the production scene. So we've got everybody from indie filmmakers and wedding cinema guys and um, big time directors of photography and agency producers sitting in a room and just dialoguing about the video production industry and how we can make it better how we can up the, the level of content, up the level of quality, and just really bring value to the product that we, that we package and sell. Well, how does Hawaii compare to other places in terms of video production? Um, 
And obviously we have a state-of-the-art studio here. Yeah. This is this is light years beyond, <laughs> I'm sure, even what you had in Los Angeles. But, you know, in, in terms of, uh, you know, I see a lot of ads. I, I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you go on the mainland mm -hmm. and you see these really sharp, you know, car commercials and watch commercials and everything else. And you come here and it's it's kind of not so sharp. Mm -hmm. It's kind of kind of amateur. Uh, that's my impression. Is, is that what you see, too? There, there are a lot of... Um, there are a lot of quality TV spots on, on, on air right now in Hawaii, but there are a lot of spots that are, are of less quality. Um, and gosh, there's a lot to be said about that. You're very nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't like to badmouth anybody or anything because as an industry, I think it's, it's better to build the community rather than, you know, bring anybody down. Mm -hmm. uh, so. And that's really the, the passion behind, behind Hawaii Shoots, is to bring some of those people who have less experience but still need to get products made into the arena with people who have been in the industry for decades. Um, and again, bring that quality up rather than trying to tear anybody down for work that they're actually doing. You know? um, so Hawaii Shoots is, is where we have workshops. Um, I'm actually hosting one in January. Um, where we're just going to talk about some of the fundamentals of DSLR cameras and how to use them for video production. Um, I think a lot of people are going to be getting cameras for Christmas, for Black Friday maybe, mm -hmm. that wanted to use them as video equipment, but just don't really know how. So we're going to teach some of those fundamentals and hopefully get people started with shooting video. Now, how did you learn it? Did you learn it on the job when you were in LA or did you learn it in school somewhere here? Um, well, the two big components to video or film are the production side of things, right? The actual cameras and lights and all of those things, and the post-production side. When I was in LA, I was on the post-production side in the editorial department, kind of managing the, the, the tech, um, the computer side, as well as the editorial and the piecing together of the actual video once it was shot. And when I came back to Hawaii, I, I noticed uh, a very different mentality when it came to production which is if you don't offer everything, um, it's hard to get work. It's really hard to get work here as a specialist. Um, so it was hard for me to find work just as an editor. It was easier for me to find work if I could pick up a camera and shoot it and edit it at the same time. That's what everybody was looking for. So I was kind of forced to pick the camera back up and, and just refigure everything out. Again, Started with the VHSC camera, kind of doing everything, running down on my own. Um, but when you pick up a DSLR camera, it's much more like a filmmaking tool. It's built that way, and when you shoot video on it, so there's a ton to learn. And um, I learned from a lot of really great, great people. So you really you have to put on like your your video production hat, then you put on your editor's hat, and then what? Then you put up your marketing hat. Is that how it works? Because you have to actually eat and market yourself is is so so maybe having to put on so many hats is what kind of brings down the the quality of the video production would you say I think so um, <laughs> there there are a lot of people in Hawaii that are forced to generalize in in skill sets rather than specialize in a particular one so like in LA I mean you got a ton of people that make careers just by doing um, just by edit by editing and you have guys that just design sound. You have guys that are just dedicated to lights, right? And if you're on an actual, um, if you're on a union job, your, your jobs are literally uh, partitioned off for you. If you are hired to be a grip, you know, somebody who's there to put up tripod, I mean, you know, help with the set, you, you, you are restricted from touching the camera. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There are there are jobs that are that are literally partitioned off for you, and so if you're it's a like DP, a government job, yeah, yeah, so exactly, exactly. Okay. So in, if you're if you're running a union shoot, you you have all of these specific, uh, you know, these specialties. So a DP is just a DP; it can't be anything else. And in Hawaii, there are a lot less of those types of companies because the the budgets. Um, don't really allow for those types of specialties um, as they used to in the past. Now, how about uh, outsourcing? Can can we say, for example, 
Uh, can you shoot something with a video and then outsource the editing elsewhere? Because yeah. I know, like, my accountant, you know, mm -hmm. they, you know, they do some part of it in-house, another half of it is outsourced. That keeps mm -hmm. the cost down. Yeah. Is that something that's possible here? Or can we receive outsourced work from other parts of the country? Sure. Um, there are companies here that are dedicated primarily to post-production and ed editorial. Um, I know one specifically that gets a lot of work is Montage 9. They've been in the industry for a long time, and they're well known for their the great edit staff and um, their great color color grading staff, uh, and that's that's what they do. That's what they're really really good at. Um, I've actually gotten hired by um, a, a company in Canada just to shoot um, Hawaii footage for them that they would take back and they would edit, you know, on, on their own. And, and there's a lot of that type of work where people just need a shooter in Hawaii to shoot footage that they'll use on their own. Wow. So you're trying to put together this group to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear about that. Yeah. But we have to go to a break for a moment. Okay. So I hope you can hang on. Sure. And those of you watching can also hang on. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're watching Think Tech. We want to thank our underwriters. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric on Maui and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. The High Tech Development Corporation, the state's leading technology agency, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Castle in Cook, Hawaii, with a time-honored legacy that spans more than 160 years and revolves around its mission of investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Hawaii Gas, formerly the gas company, a proponent of the liquefied natural gas initiative, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Collateral Analytics, a Hawaii-based tech company empowering the real estate industry with greater and faster access to the tools and data they need to make better informed property investment decisions. I'm Nicole Horry. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech. I'm Maria Kashen. See you next time. We're back, we're live, and you're watching Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Sares. With us today, in our ongoing series, Next Big Thing, or NBT, we have Brad Watanabe. He's with B-Rad Studios, B-Rad Studios, and he's starting up a new project called Hawaii Shoots. Now, Hawaii Shoots is kind of a, a get-together uh, in order to make a difference in the Hawaii filmmaking community. So uh, very happy to have him on the show. Thanks for sticking with us here through the break. Thanks for having me. Not running out the door in, yeah. in fear and, <laughs> and cold sweat from, from all the lights and cameras. But it sounds to me like you're used to this kind of thing. So I'm usually on the other side of the glass, but yeah. There you go. So you know if we're doing a good job or not. There you go. <laughs> So tell me about Hawaii Shoots. What's your vision for Hawaii Shoots? Um, so I was, I was really blessed and privileged to have a great experience um, in LA, learning a lot about production, what it takes to actually build some amazing work. And I know that a lot of people in Hawaii don't have the opportunity either to go to film school or to work for a big studio. And so I wanted to bring some of that experience and, and also just to, to bring in all the other experiences from people in the industry that have been doing it for a long time and just share that knowledge. I noticed that um, in an industry that's saturated with independence, you know, and, and freelancers, information tends to be something that you don't want to share um, because it's, it's like your secret sauce, what makes you unique. And, and I find that tends to fracture an industry. It, it, ten, it tends to, to, to build walls rather than bring communities together. And so I think as an industry, rather than, um, rather than trying to divide and, and really uh, get win every, every job out there, I think the community as, as, a, as a whole, as a video production industry, would be strengthened by people learning from each other and growing together so that we can um, strengthen the product that we sell. If we're all selling a video product, a TV commercial or a documentary or a marketing piece or a wedding video. Uh, ultimately, it's all visual communication. And I think that I mean, the product itself is the same. It's, an, it's the audience and the clientele that are different. Uh, so we all have things in common. 
We all have things to share. We're all using very similar equipment. And I, I think with that, we have a lot to, to gain from each other. And so Hawaii Shoots is a place where we can dialogue and communicate on, on the website, but as well as, uh, I think, even more so in person. So we have these workshops, we have meetups, and, and all these different events that we, we try to do to help grow the community. So it's, like it's kind of like a support group for independent contractors who would otherwise be trying to figure this stuff out on their own mm -hmm. in an effort to kind of bring up the total production value, the total quality output. Yeah. And uh, how, many, how many small independent contractors are there out trying to get these commercials and, and uh, documentaries, that kind of stuff? Is it a lot? Is it more than it used to be? As far as the clientele coming in or the people making the product? The people making them. Yeah, I think there's a lot. And, and the reason is because the consumer products have gotten so good. Um, what used to take a huge film crew and a really expensive film camera uh, to shoot and develop and process, you can do with a DSLR camera now. And, and given the, the quality isn't, isn't quite the same, it's, it's really good quality HD footage. So because the tools are, are accessible to people, uh, people tend to think that they one guy is good as another. Or... Yeah. Oh. And, and so because the, the equipment looks the same, they think that the production value and the quality of the, the story is going to be the same. And so you have a lot of people who are just kind of popping up whose cousin has a camera or a friend has a camera um, to, to jump in in the market. I've heard that before. Oh, I got a new camera. My cousin's going to come over and we're going to film a commercial there you go. next weekend. And then it ends up on the air and then that's what we're watching over and over again, right? Yeah. And so there are a lot of people out there that are, are doing something similar with similar technologies without necessarily the training or the expertise or, or just the resources to build solid products. And so um, we've got everybody from directors and producers and talent and, and sound people and, and makeup and you know, stylists. Every, every part of the production um, process, we want to sit in this room and, and just dialogue. I mean, we've had Jason Sopia of 1013, President and CEO of 1013, come and talk about business um, and how to run a, a successful production company. And I think it's something that most people that pick up a camera don't really think about is how am I going to make this sustainable? How am I going to actually um, make a living off of, you know, this, this little camera that I just got? Um, rather, it, you know, people just kind of jump in with, with the camera or technology that, that they have. Well, is there a training program? I, I know since you mentioned L.A., I mean, USC obviously is one of the most famous film schools in, in the world, right? So you can go there. And in fact, many years ago, I actually had a roommate who was a USC film student. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came from Japan, uh, straight from Japan. He says, you know, I'm going to go to the best film school on earth and he got into USC. He was very fortunate. So is there a training program out here or something like that where, where students can go to learn and become better film students? Uh, I know that UH has their new media program. Oh, okay. And, and they have a, a film school, and I think that um, their charge is being led by Chris Lee, uh, who is a really well-known producer. Uh, his, his career in L.A. is pretty well-documented and great, very, very talented guy. But there's a lot of people that, rather than going the traditional education route, are learning from YouTube and Vimeo. And, you know, these, these platforms <laughs> online, because the information is out there. People are trying to share it and get it, get it online. Um, and people are learning from it. I, I've learned a ton from the internet. And I think a lot of people have. And, but there's, there's something that you can't learn from the internet, and that's the tactile functionality of actually working with equipment with somebody who's already you know, dealt with some of the trials and tribulations of dealing with that equipment on a real set, or giving you that experience to understand how, how, to, how to talk professionally with with an agency or a client, you know, some of those things that you don't really mm. fully understand until you do it. And gosh, the, the first time you flop in front of a client is it's kind of a miserable experience, you know? And so to try to prevent some of that, that's, that's another part of what we do, it's just education. Can, can you share some of your, your flops and some of your successes? Well, we've heard your successes with HP and, you know, these other big Apple, the big campaigns. Yeah. Is, there, is there a lesson maybe you can leave us with, you know, like what not to do and here's how, here's what I did wrong and you shouldn't do this? Hmm. I think 
gosh, we, we, we live in a, in a day where everybody just wants to jump in, you know, mm -hmm. full, just, just, just head, headstrong and, and just really dive into whatever they're doing. And, and we're kind of taught that by social media campaigns and, and marketing campaigns that you got to go out there and live your dream and do your thing, right? And, and, there's, <laughs> and there's, don't prepare at all. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of uh, really, really powerful testimonials that have happened from people that have gone that route. But there are also a lot of people who have failed in that attempt, right? A lot? Like almost everybody. It's like the one rare gem. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be the next Facebook. Okay, good luck with that. And, and I think that one of my one of my biggest challenges is jumping into the product, production industry without any business background. I've never taken a business class, and so learning how to how to run a successful business has really been an uphill battle. Trying to make sure that I'm, I'm my my uh, my rates are high enough to sustain, um, you know. My, my rent or, or my, my mortgage or whatever it is, but just, just learning how to build a successful business is more than 50% of what I do. Um, there's so much, there's, a, there's a, a lot of strategy involved, but I think there is a lot of fine art mentality right? um, where people want to be able to build beautiful and amazing projects um, without really thinking about how, how sustainable their, their idea is. There's a ton of people, like I said, freelancing and doing production really well as well, you know, out there. So jumping into the game. Um, so they have the passion, but they really need the business expertise. Yeah. They need to fall on their face and learn how to. So maybe an MBA would be the. the good I, would, I would be so happy if there were more MBAs that were interested in helping production companies. Um, I don't think that it's it's wise for me to be. Um, studying all the business or being the, the the brains behind the entire business because I'm not wired that way. Mm. I'm wired to be um, the, the creative um, planner and the producer of, of projects. And so I, I choose to team up with people who understand business a lot better than I am, uh, than I do or ever could. They understand strategy. They under, understand forecasting, you know, futures and things. So teaming up with people who are better at, at that task than you are. And, and bringing their strengths in with yours, I think, is, is even stronger than you learning everything by yourself. Again, it's that idea of trying to learn how to specialize in a task rather than generalize in everything. We, we take on too much as, as small business people. And in production, gosh, there's so many different tasks that you can flood yourself with. Um, but I think business is one of those that and I think that's forget. that's really good advice for any person trying to start a business, doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should learn what a business is first yeah. and then see how your skill set can apply to that and who else is doing that same thing. Yep. And I think Hawaii Shoots is really going to help out you know, those small guys, those guys who are out there who want to be creative and create something cool with their iPad mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and uh, have them actually run a sustainable business that way. So I think you're really going to make a difference. Yeah, right. We've got people flying choppers. We've got people, you know, doing underwater stuff. We've got people with all kinds of different talents that are coming out to these events and just want to help, want to share um, their experiences and their technology. And so it's a great place to just meet people that are in a like field. Well, where can people go for more information? Um, HawaiiShoots.com. HawaiiShoots. HawaiiShoots.com is mm -hmm. the, the blog site um, where we're... You know, we, we, we talk about that kind of stuff and where, where, I, where I have uh, a list of events that we're going to be doing. And B Red Studio is my production company to see what I actually do. Cool. Everything. I like it. Well, thanks so much for coming by and sharing. Really yeah. appreciate it. And uh, again, we had Brad Watanabe here. He's with B Rad Studios. And his uh, special startup is called Hawaii Shoots. So for more information, go to www.hawaiishoots.com. We'll be back in a moment right after this break with more ThinkTech. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia in Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asia in Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com.
And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Alalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And Hi. on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. 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 I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii, broadcasting live from the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. We raise public awareness about tech, energy, and globalism in Hawaii. Technology is critical to our state. A vibrant tech sector will give us new prospects in the global marketplace and will offer great careers and make our economy more resilient. Streaming live on Ustream and Spreaker, ThinkTech allows its hosts and guests invaluable opportunities to report important events and discuss important questions, and to be heard here in Hawaii and around the world. You can find links to our live streams on thinktechhawaii.com or on our mobile website, m.thinktechhawaii.com. And you can see our archive on YouTube. It's all just a click away. We want to do whatever we can to keep Hawaii relevant, connected, and thriving in the complexity of the 21st century. We hope you will help us in those efforts. Tune in today. This is ThinkTech. I'm Jay Fidel. Aloha. I'm Nicole Horry for ThinkTech. For nearly half a century, the Hawaii Foreign Trade Zone No. 9 has brought the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. DBET, the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, operates Hawaii's Foreign Trade Zone program to encourage international business and economic development. The Foreign Trade Zone's mission is to increase the amount of international trading activity in Hawaii, thereby providing employment opportunities for the residents of our island state. For more information, see ftz9.org. I'm Nicole Hori. Mahalo. We're back, we're live, and you're watching Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Saras. On our ongoing series, Next Big Thing, or NBT for short, we go and find those small companies that are drinking soda and eating popcorn late at night, or, or chips, whatever your preference is. We're, watch, we're watching for these small companies and trying to give them that Think Tech bump, something to give them a little bit of promotion and help along their way. And our next company, is uh, a very interesting company. They make sustainable clothing. It's called Organic, with a K, clothing line. And uh, with us is Ed Fernandez. Ed, thanks for joining us in the show. All right, thanks for having me. So uh, Ed, tell me, what is Organic Clothing and what was your idea for creating this company? Well, okay, Organic Clothing, um, I started this uh, in 2007 and launched it in 2008. Um, and uh, I, I used to live on the big island in Kona and I uh, started out this company just to do something a little different from, you know, buying clothes at the store, a surf shop, and everything having big logos, and you know, I kind of grew out of that. So I wanted to do something more artistic. And uh, there's other brands that have been doing it, and um, just in I reinvented the wheel, basically, taking what was already out there and adding an eco-friendly, sustainable twist to it. So making designer T-shirts with um, graphics and um, making it more sustainable. Hmm. Yeah. So you you you're creating these clothing this clothing yourself is that it correct yeah and uh, where do you get the materials from what what's what's it look like yeah so um, I have a uh, my business partner is my cousin Brian and Jones and he's he was living in Seattle when we started the brand and his background is in graphic design my background is in environmental health public health so I took the environmental side of it coupled with his design graphic background and uh, that's how we came up with a few designs on blank t-shirts uh, and then evolved into cut and sew which is um, our specs um, and uh, and cuts on the t-shirts weight of the material different types of sustainable materials and then um, uh, going from there so um, I have shirts to show if you want me to show them. Yeah, yeah, let's see what you have. Now, I see you, you brought in this bag. It looks like you stole it from Mr. Potato Head. So why don't you, why don't you hold it up over here. Yeah, there we go. 100% Kona. What is this? Kona... Uh, Kona coffee. Kona coffee. This so, yeah. is Kona coffee bag. Yeah, so it's uh, Kona, the coffee belt okay. of Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I used to live there. And um, we, we started out making these... Um, burlap bags we call it the beach bum bag with uh, used coffee sacks but they are just all beat up and nasty so um, I were I sourced it from an actual coffee farm in Holuoloa in, on the big island and um, we, we cut it made it into uh, these carry-all totes with um, 
line, it's pretty festive. liners. Yeah, it's like I'm ready to go to Mardi Gras. With yeah, this yeah, you know, you carries everything you need: beads, coffee, drinks. Well, and, and that's the thing, you know, one of the reasons we wanted to have you on ThinkTech, because this, this obviously is not a very high-tech product, but the textile industry is kind of on this resurgence now here in Hawaii. Yes. So yeah. are you starting to feel of that? Or? Yeah, and um, I was um, part, of, uh, I'm part of the Hawaii Fashion Incubator mm -hmm. and um, helped them in the very beginning of planning the uh, Hawaii Fashion Month um, trade show. So the governor declared October as Hawaii Fashion Month, so we had a big trade show called Outfit at Ward um, Warehouse and uh, it was a huge success. So um, every year we're going to have Fashion Month with cool events, designers, um, trade shows and fun things like that. Yeah, we, we're actually doing some promo for that right right when it started. So oh, cool. yeah, I think we, we hopefully gave them a little bit of bump. Yeah. A little bit of a bump there, a little think tech bump. So what do you have in here? Okay. Sh show me the before and after. Okay. Ever... Yeah, so this is, um, so the bag, um, mm -hmm. there's nothing um, eco-friendly about it except that we it's made in Hawaii. It's supporting local businesses. Oh, that's good. And uh, so um, one last thing to ship over. Yeah, and they, these bags do really great in uh, in Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Yeah, they sell our bags, and their accessories. Okay, so here are the different shirts I brought. Um, so you can use it to go shopping as well as go on the beach. Yeah. Yeah, we call it the beach bum bag for that reason. It has cool. Um, it has actual real dock line rope and um, brass grommets so it's real sturdy and some people turn these inside out and you know it's reversible mm. okay so uh, basically what I brought is um, our um, organic cotton or different t-shirts so this is uh, one of our new designs diamond head this is a hundred percent certified organic cotton it's like what you're wearing yeah oh yeah yeah exactly and um, real soft and uh, we designed the t-shirts, my cousin designs the art, and, um, and it's all produced in Los Angeles. I know you mentioned you're from LA, right, right, so right. this is made in the garment district in LA, so 100% USA made, and um, we get these, um, I, sh I have them shipped over, and then um, we have it dyed here locally, and uh, create designs here, and um, inspired by the beach, inspired by nature, and all the shirts are dyed locally, and printed locally with water-based inks, so it gives it like a more vintage look and feel, so you don't feel the ink, and um, that's that's what we get out of it. Now, is this the beechwood material you were telling me about? Uh, no, yeah, this is a 100% uh, organic cotton, so no pesticides or chemicals are used in the um, growing of the cotton. Um, so you could eat your shirt. Oh uh, yeah, you, you can. Know, you can. Yeah, you can bury it in the ground, and it's <laughs> it's renewable. Um, this is. Uh, and so I'll show you the other organic cotton ones. So this is what we did, a, a women's crop tea, mm -hmm. same graphic there. And uh, this is really appropriate for today in the women's crop tea because it is Aloha, Aloha Friday. Aloha Friday. <laughs> you should have a little, uh, you know, beer down here to really complete the picture. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah that would be a good idea. So, um, yeah, we have that. And then um, the other material uh, I brought, or other styles, I brought is the one made out of beechwood. This is a micro modal. So we call this our boyfriend tee for the women. Mm. One size fits most. One size fits most. Well, I don't know. This is this is kind of wide for me. It might work. <laughs> but you know what? We do have to take a quick break. Okay. So uh, I want to see some more of these, and I want to see that new uh, organic beechwood. That's the, that's a really neat stuff. You're making sh clothing out of wood that ends up on the shore, right? So that's that's neat stuff. Yeah. All right. Here with us is Ed Fernandez. Uh, he's with Organic Clothing, and we'll be right back after this break. Aloha. I'm Nicole Horry for Think Tech. For nearly half a century, the Hawaii Foreign Trade Zone Number 9 has brought the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone Program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. DBET, the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, operates Hawaii's Foreign Trade Zone Program to encourage international business and economic development. The Foreign Trade Zone's mission is to increase the amount of international trading activity in Hawaii, thereby providing employment opportunities for the residents of our island state. For more information, see ftz9.org. I'm Nicole Hori. Mahalo. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel for ThinkTech. For nearly half a century, the Hawaiian Foreign Trade Zone, number nine, has brought the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. DBED, the Hawaii Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, operates Hawaii's Foreign Trade Zone program. 
It does so to encourage international business and economic development. The Foreign Trade Zone mission is to increase the amount of international trading activity in Hawaii, thereby providing employment opportunities for the residents of our island state. For more information, see ftz9.org. I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. Mahalo. We're back, and you're watching Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Saras. With us today in our ongoing series, NBT, or Next Big Thing, is Ed Fernandez. He's with Organic Clothing. That's organic with a K. And he's a local clothing designer and manufacturer here in Hawaii that's making clothes in a very local, new, and actually, uh, I would venture to say, traditional way, which is we're really looking for materials that are here locally that we can use to make clothing. So um, obviously no grass skirts, that would be yeah. way too obvious. Yeah. But uh, there's a product that you mentioned, which is which I was very fascinated by, called Beechwood. Now, what is Beechwood? Uh, so Beechwood is grow, uh, a tree that's uh, sourced out of um, Europe. And um, the, the Beechwood trees are um, processed to make um, uh, micromodal fiber textiles. And the micromodal, is uh, very sustainable, uh, breathable, and really luxurious soft material. And that's what you get here in our um, organic uh, boyfriend tea. Oh, it, it is it is very soft. And uh, here, let's hold it up a little bit more. And it's, it's very pink, too, so I, I like that. Now, are these shirts, um, are you also able to sell them locally, like in ABC stores and Kmart or anything uh, like that? Mostly boutiques. boutiques. Uh, so Fighting Eel uh, in Chinatown, uh, we have um, the modern Honolulu, the hotel, uh, Happy Haliva, Pipe Dreams, Genius Outfitters. These are all different stores that sell our clothing. Now, I got a stupid question. You're a local guy. You have local connections. You're making all this stuff locally. Why don't we have any of the big stores stocking your product? Um, as for the department stores? Any place. I mean, uh, you know, where people shop? Walmart, Kmart's. ABC stores? Oh, well, yeah, that comes down to price. Um, and, and the pricing on these are too high for those types of stores. Oh, so you've talked to these kind of stores? Well, no, but um, you, uh, when you go to ABC, you're getting five shirts for $20. Mm -hmm. And um, Walmart, same thing. It's, it's, it's um, a lower price point. Um, but, they're, but they're not made from organic beechwood. Right, yeah. And, uh, this is something that I think uh, locals would want to wear. Yeah, they, and they can get those at the boutiques. So uh, how, how fashion and clothing work is uh, it's all based on price points and certain stores will attract you know, a, a $10 t-shirt, um, certain stores can sell a $40 t-shirt mm. or higher. So that's, that's how it's priced and that's how it's categorized. Oh, I see. So this is like a $40, $50 t-shirt. Yes, yeah, yeah. They're, 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 not, um, you, they're value added products made, made, in, uh, made in U.S., um, sustainable materials. Uh, and the printing process is um, more uh, old school, using uh, screen prints with uh, done by hand. So a handmade shirt out of quality materials is going to cost you forty, fifty bucks. Yes. But then again, it'll probably last longer yeah, than yeah. a five dollar tee. Right. But you know, uh, I see um, high end shirts such as this. You know, at, uh, I'd seen them even at Sears. I mean, uh, would I mean? I guess what I'm trying to figure out here is that as a local company. You know, we sh you know, I, I hear ads on TV, try by local, try mm -hmm. by local, right? So um, I should see this in, in a Target or a Sears or, I know I'm making you sweat, but it's, it just seems, it seems a little strange that as a local company, you would only be able to sell your stuff to small little no-name boutiques. Because I mean, I, I, I hear that you, you mentioned a few of these places, but I haven't heard of these small boutique shops before. Yeah. But I sure know of Target, I sure know of Sears. Yeah. And I know they buy local sometimes. Yeah, the biggest store we have would be the Navy Exchange. Navy Exchange, Yeah, okay. they sell our, our clothing. Uh, as far as like the Targets, like a lot of the buying offices are on the mainland. Mm -hmm. So um, the buying power is not, the buying offices are not here locally. And, um, so there's no local representation in, say, in a Target? They're not looking I'm, for local brands? I'm not too sure. Yeah, I haven't pursued Target. Um, I've pursued other, like, um, like TJ Maxx and, and oh, companies. So it's just a waiting game. You know, there's, like, I'm sure there's a million companies approaching them daily. So um, you can only email them so many times. And well, that's why we give you the Think Tech bumps. So you can, cool. you can say, I've been on TV, and 
have showed off my shirts and how fabulous they are. Awesome. Um, do you have any pictures to show us maybe of the process or the uh, or the uh, the actual raw product that before uh, and after? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't have any. I just brought the finished product oh, to show you. That's even better than I think. So, um, so tell me then, uh, what are your plans uh, now that you've now that you've launched this product? You've been in business about what six years? Yes. And uh, so, what's what's next? Uh, so um, we we've uh, grown the brand um, you know, on all, all islands in Hawaii and. Um, brought it to the mainland. We've done trade shows um, in Vegas, uh, California, Florida, and uh, we've also distribute, we also distribute in Japan. So I'm going back to Japan uh, next month for uh, a trade show called International Fashion Fair. So it's the biggest trade show in, in Tokyo, in Japan, and um, to present new designs, new styles, and um, help our um, existing customers and, and also attract new ones. And do you have any mainland companies that are buying this now? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's mostly boutiques and some uh, resorts, but um, it's it's yeah mostly boutique level stores, none of the majors, like department stores or anything like that. Do you um, are you thinking of maybe moving some production here to Oahu? Um, you... Yeah, some of our stuff is done here locally. Um, we did a, a run of uh, uh, bamboo T-shirts that were made here locally. We did shorts as well, collaboration with Jams. Uh, we that was all made locally. The bags are made locally, and um, we're working on new products. Do you have more people who are, who are maybe coming on board, or how, yeah, how big is your we, staff? Yeah, now? we have. We have um, so my cousin and I do the the design, the sourcing, and the um, styles, and we have um, sales reps and um, people that help with the shipping and package packing and everything. So uh, everyone is um, pretty much like a, a freelance or um, mm -hmm. subcontract to help us. With the branding and the marketing and the whole part of the business. Well, it seems to me like you actually have a good handle on what it takes to run the business. And I think you saw our last interview where Brad was mentioning, you know, a lot of these guys jump into it with this big creative angle mm. and they don't think about what it's going to take to keep that sustainable, which is profit. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, yeah, is this a profitable product for you guys? Um, it's getting there. Yeah, you know, we always roll it into, um, you know, cash flow and, and, and designing new stuff and creating more products. So we add more to our collection every season. How many SKUs do you have now? Well, um, we have uh, different, like four or five different body styles for women and men, uh, and accessories. So probably like twenty. Twenty SKUs. Yeah, and then the graphics we run about, you know, fifteen to twenty graphics. So twenty by fifteen. Yeah, I, I saw this one. It looks very, it looks very fun here. So this was was it was like an extra wide load. Yeah, that's our women's boyfriend tee. Um, that's the micro modal made from Beechwood, made in California, and uh, the the Chompy the Shark graphic. So, so who would wear this? The man or the woman? Uh, uh, it's it's a woman's. Yeah, it's called a boyfriend tee. And uh, it's so, if a you wire. have a big lady, if you have a big lady and uh, you're scared of her. <laughs> You want to give her something appropriate. You give her an extra wide. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Or um, you know, a lot of uh, like the fashionistas, the young girls, they love this style of T-shirt because it's it's real. It's like a poncho. It's big. Oh, it, like does it hang? Is it yeah, meant it, to go beneath the belly button, or is it? Oh. Um, yeah, it's it's not a straight across uh, hem. So yeah, it's it's kind of like this. Yeah, girls will style it differently. Yeah, uh, over the shoulder, but it's just a throw over piece, like perfect for at the beach or even going out at night. Um, so it, it's versatile. Oh, so you wear something underneath. You can, yeah. And then you put this on top, and then now you're cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really fashion and trend. This would be cool if it was glow in the dark. Yeah, yeah. it's it's tough because we use water-based inks, uh, which are uh, water soluble. It's it, it's uh, more eco-friendly. Um, so there's not there's no major chemicals in the inks, like petroleum-based stuff that would. Uh, Damage their ecosystem, so it's uh, hard to work with neons inks. Oh, I see, I see. Properties with that ink. So this is—is is this a popular thing? The uh, the throw because this is more like kind of like an upper end gift item, right? Right. Yeah, and our our stuff is designer T-shirt, designer clothing. There we go. We'll fold this over here. What's another cool one? I'm sorry, we were we were. I was watching you disappear into the background during our first part of the show, so I wasn't paying attention exactly. Pineapple. What's this one? pineapple. Yeah, that's yeah. our vintage pineapple. That's a real popular piece mm -hmm. and um, so uh, yeah we don't really go too crazy with um, throwing our name brand everywhere we usually brand it right here on the collar mm -hmm. and um, the hang tags that tell the story of what the material is or 
who are about. Yeah, I can see even a little bit of ink splatter over here. So you, this is really handmade. Uh, is yeah, I don't see a little tag here. How do you? Can oh you yeah, just that, wash this or? Yeah, it's just machine this, wash, cold. You can line dry it or tumble dry it, and um, it lasts for a long time. So we go for a real vintage look. And so, yeah, so this one here, the organic cotton, has all the information. Oh, so you have to read the, oh, that's smart. Yeah. So you don't have a tag to cut off. This is the first oh, thing my wife does is Yeah, yeah, we call this, um, yeah, screen printed um, tagless shirts. And then we have the hang tags that tell the story as well when it's sold at a, at a store, folded or on a hanger. Oh, like the little the ones Market. you can clip on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's, um, that's a little bit about what we do. <laughs> Oh, that is awesome. Well, I like it. I, you know, I, I think you're on the right path, and it seems like uh, you have a good product, and you have a good trajectory. Now we just got to get you, uh, got to get you launched into the next, uh, into the next thing. Yeah, so. the next big thing, right? That's yeah. gonna be fun. Yeah. So, um, yeah, people can um, go online at our um, our website and um, check out our our lookbooks, our collection, and also um, purchase online. And our com online commerce site, um, it's at uh, organicclothing.com. Organic with a K. Correct, yeah. Now, how are you guys doing your online presence, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, oh, social media. Yeah, we have um, interns, and I'm on my iPhone all the time, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We have all that. So what do you do? do what's your successful strategy for getting some promotion for this? Uh, well, um, a lot of our retailers, um, the... Uh, the, the employees at the retail stores, they're really good at um, uh, promoting the brands and, and the, 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 from different companies. So they'll do Instagram posts and uh, really? hashtag us or tag us on all the posts. Um, so uh, for Instagram, we're at, at organic. And uh, same with uh, Twitter, we're at the organic. And um, Facebook organic is our fan page. So the idea is that your retailers then become your PR department. Yeah, right. Yeah. So they're the ones actually putting. And what do they put on when when someone like comes in and tries in a piece of clothing, or is it when a new line comes in? Yeah. How are they when, doing when I ship them uh, the new new designs, uh, when I ship their orders, they'll uh, they'll take selfies, photos, and and um, take pictures of themselves, mark, and then post it up on Instagram, and and that's how they get the word out to their customers and their fan base. Interesting, interesting. So that, that is actually an interesting strategy. Yeah. So is that what a lot of fashion companies use? Is that how they get the, their PR in? Yeah, instant, instant, instant uh, PR. And so now the PR comes in, now tell me more about the sales cycle. So um, someone sees your product, then what do they do? Do they typically order stuff through direct sales off your website? They can, yeah. Or um, if, if um, um, we're shipping to, let's say, Fighting Eel in Chinatown, um, I, I use them as an example because they're really proactive in, in, in getting the sales and marketing and doing the uh, social media promotions and um, I'll send them their delivery and then um, I'll also do my marketing online with social media and hey uh, new designs coming to Fighting Eel uh, check it out and then I'll tag them on there as well so uh, it goes both ways you know I'm promoting our brand and then they also promote it for us as well hmm. okay so it's a, it's a two-way street particularly with retailers uh, how about uh, do you get so really it's not about you directly doing social media stuff it's really training your retail vendors to become your salespeople right yeah yeah we, we encourage it yeah they do it themselves but then we also encourage them and we'll work out like certain um, you know um, price packs or giveaways and or discounts oh so to, you try to reward them if they do do that social media promotions for you yeah yeah we'll do a collaborative effort in, in helping promote the brand better. So you guys don't really have to do any of the PR yourself. You just make the great product and train your, train the the customers who you have sold to wholesale to be able to PR it for you. Yeah, yeah, there I mean the the retailers themselves are really big on social media. You know, that's fashion is very trendy, you know, so they want to get new stuff in all the time, you know, so it doesn't get dated or you know, um, doesn't fall out of trend. So they're always quick on moving product and social media is the fastest way. And uh, is there a, is there like a maturation cycle where a, a, you know one of your styles goes out of date, they run some sort of sale, get rid of it, and then move on to the next? Is that how it works uh, yeah, in fashion? Yeah, yeah, they, they do it that way. Um, and um, yeah, we're always coming out with new designs and new styles, new colors, so we try to help them speed up the process. You know, if they, if they move things quicker, they get more new product, more new styles. 
Interesting, interesting. So really it's all about the education on that on that side and really showing them on how to do that PR. Yeah, and, and I mean they know how to do it themselves too. They're they're really versed in that, you know, and and um, we just we uh, we like I like to train them on the products themselves, like the different materials, the micro modals, the organic cotton, and then this shirt that's made out of recycled plastic. So um, you know, it's a great marketing piece to tell people, hey, if you can you can sell the shirt because it's made out of plastic bottles. Five plastic bottles are saved out of the landfill and used in, to make these um, t-shirts. As long as they're not drinking a soda. While, while you're talking to them, I guess that makes yeah. that makes good sense. Well, they're going to put it in the recycle bin, and then it's going to get shipped out and then repurposed into a t-shirt. Into a shirt. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I'm excited. I really want to see this, and I really thank you for sharing that that process. Maybe that'll give some inspiration to some of the people who are watching our show. So thank you, Ed, so much for coming on to the show, and uh, thank you for tuning in to Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Ceres. With us today was Ed Fernandez from Organic Clothing and Brad Watanabe. He's with uh, Hawaii Shoots. So be sure to check them out. I'm sure you can Google them or find them on Facebook and all the other social media places where they, where they reside. I'm your host, Attila Saras. And remember to do well to others and have a great weekend. Aloha. <laughs>